So what does this verse here, wherefore he saith, this is Ephesians 4, 8, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth, that he descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. There goes on to say, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God into unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. It goes on. This is like, this goes on and on, but it's, this is heavy. This is heavy, heavy duty. So hopefully I can <clears throat> unpack this a little bit. If you go to Psalms 68, you come across this again. This is King David speaking here. It says the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Wow, that's that's heavy as well. Loaded us with benefits. Now, it's interesting that whoever wrote this psalm basically prophesied into the future what Jesus Christ would do when he died and rose again. Not only did he die, but he rose again to the highest part of heaven and led captivity captive. So I'm going to attempt to explain what this means. Think of it like there were positions in heaven that were corrupt. They were not going the way that God wanted them to go because of free will. The angels also have free will. And a percentage of these angels weren't doing what they were supposed to do. So before God created the heavens and the earth, he had a plan in place. This is predestination that when he died and rose again, that he would divvy up gifts. He would give out gifts. One of those gifts is obviously eternal life. That those that accept his gift get a seat in heaven. This is not forcing anyone. This is not predestination. Some are destined to hell. Some are destined to heaven. This is, you have a choice to be a Christian. And if you become a Christian, you get a spot in heaven. So the led captivity captive is... There are principalities, powers, rulers of the air that are influencing the earth in a negative way. The authorities, you know, leaders, all this kind of stuff. And when Jesus ascended up into heaven, he was able to take over and give out gifts. And we are replacing those angels that are corrupt. We are replacing them. So right now, we have an influence in the spiritual realm, in heavenly places, just by having the Holy Spirit in us. So the more Christians, the, the more people that get saved and become a Christian, the more influence we have in the heavenly realm. 
Why? Because again, we have the Holy Spirit with us. And the more you are in tune to what God is doing, not only on earth, but in heaven, it all starts in heaven. Everything starts in heaven. We always look around us and we think, oh, this person is is bad or wicked or whatever it is. And it's it's really, you're looking at it as a symptom of something deeper and it all takes place in heaven so this is what god is doing he is restoring heaven right now even today and building an army so that one day when he comes back he's not only coming back with angels but he's coming back with saints this is why paul talks about thessalonians like don't worry about people that fall asleep in the lord because when they fall asleep in the Lord, they are present with him in heaven. They are right now, we are influencing the heavenly realm. It's almost like a takeover, a company takeover, if you will, where <clears throat> they can still operate. The angels that are corrupt in heaven, they still operate. They just don't have authority anymore until they get kicked out of heaven. They're not kicked out yet, but they just every the more Christians that get saved, <clears throat> the more we populate heaven with our authority. <clears throat> so we are actually influencing this world for the better. Now it doesn't always look like that on the present, like when you just have a look around and stuff, but we it's probably because we don't have any idea how much influence we have. And one day, heaven is going to be completely restored. And those angels that have fallen away are going to get kicked out of heaven, including the serpent. And it says that in the book of Revelation, where a third of the angels get kicked out of heaven <clears throat> with the ancient serpent. And they turn around to go back. And I believe that's when the rapture happens, is we who are left will be with the Lord forever in the air, in heaven. And they're not going to have any place left. They're not going to have any influence. And they're going to turn on each other. The Antichrist is going to turn on the devil and his angels. And there's going to be war against each other. And they're going to be like, you're, you're just like us. You're mortal. So that is what I think this verse is talking about if you got something out of this let me know and uh i'll uh i'll share with you more on this topic but for now uh be sure to hit the subscribe button uh feel free to comment and uh i'll see you in another video bye for now